What is going on guys? Wiser here coming to you with the recap of one of the most recent wars for Invicta and a lot of you may already know Invicta was supposed to have an arranged matchup over the weekend. However, it was sniped by 1.0 by accident. Uh, so almost even better than the arranged matchup. I mean, you know, we, we just immediately when we saw it uh, kind of clan went nuts, uh, really pulled together some awesome base building. We prepared and it showed um, anyone who followed the war um we'll know the story as i tell it here <clears throat> things were pretty even uh first let me just say uh, um start off by saying that we did lose to percentage look at that right let's see 0.47 plus another point two three so whatever 0.69 percent tough 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 um now this was this war was won and we were there within the dying minutes of the war um we did have the upper hand for pretty much the whole war. One Hive was back on the ropes and really trying to come back, and they struggled. Uh, it was a really tough war for them. I know for a fact we caught them on a bad day for sure, at least their Town Hall 9s, because their Town Hall 10s really had to come through and save the day for them, and they did. So congrats 1.0. I really hope we had you sweating though, guys, because let's let's just let's take a look at this whole breakdown here. Um, so we did have one extra Town Hall 11. Obviously, that is a very substantial advantage. Now, you look over, so they all they had an extra Town Hall 10, but they also had two 9.5s with full um, Town Hall 10 attacking armies. Um, just no Inferno Towers, mostly Town Hall 9 defenses in there. Uh, we did fresh hit three-star these kind of right off the bat, uh, just get them out of the way. But they did have, you know, four extra, I guess, six, six attacks at the Town Hall 10 level for our extra two attacks at the Town Hall 11 level, basically the Town Hall 10 at a Grand Warden. Um, so I don't know, however you want to look at that. I didn't even look at the hero levels. I know Invictus hero levels are strong enough that, um, you know, I, I would expect 1.0's overall hero levels are, we're pretty much on par. I don't know, I don't really care because it was, to me, it was a very even war, just an awesome war. I was, like, and the other thing was too, let's take a look at this. We had a bunch of 2.0 guys over. We were supposed to do this arranged war. We were filling weight, dirty Italian in there. We had myself in there. Ooh, what's up? No, three star on me. Um, a couple other guys, I swear. I know Mouthpiece was in there, our leader. And was that it? Was it really just the three of us? No, I'm missing someone. I'm totally missing someone. Oh, I, I mean, Grady just got promoted 2.0. LDP is in 2.0. Not too, too long ago, but is definitely a member of 2.0. So, I mean, we had some 2.0 guys in there filling weights uh, for the arranged matchup. So, it was awesome. Like, I couldn't have picked a better time to jump down to Invicta to do a war with my 9. Um, just loved it. Absolutely just fantastic job. So, 1.0 overall... Uh, their town hall lines really struggled, and credit goes out to our base building team at 2.0, led by the man Kadic himself. Anyone who follows our base building series or the Slay My Base series knows Kadic knows what he's talking about. Kadic single handedly built and tweaked probably about 15 to 20 plus of our town hall nine bases himself and handed them out to people. Um, I was on there, MK was on there from 2.0, um, you know, Home Stars in there, uh. Lime Killer actually has been really good. Lime and I built his base. Uh, so everyone rallied together. Honestly, guys, I don't remember. the la Actually, the la I do remember it. The last time I was this excited and felt this kind of energy going into a war was when 2.0 matched up with 1.0 and as an arranged matchup. Um, since then, I've never had this feeling. This, this war was just a fight to the finish. I Everyone had an awesome time. And... The fact that it came down to what it came down to was just unbelievable. Um, so you can see, you know, 1.0 1, 1 did not clear the nines. I don't know if that has ever happened in the past year. <laughs> like, So there is something going on there. It was definitely a combination of catching them on a bad day and catching them on a bad day up against Caddick, the man from Amsterdam. Well, not Amsterdam, the man from Holland. You know, these these Dutch bases clearly, clearly threw up some uh, difficulties for them. They had to use a lot of dips. And let's just kind of check this out real fast because I am interested myself. The overall, there's one dip, uh, two dips, 
and a miss. Keep in mind, 87%. I'm sorry, ASAP. <laughs> I had to point this out. They missed two bullies, actually. They had two bullies they failed on. Um, we honestly felt we had this in the bag, and it just we just fell short. No, like no, no one's fault, right? Our guys up top, insane amount of pressure being in a war of this caliber. Really, everything rested on their shoulders, and unfortunately, we just fell just short. Nobody's fault, right? Robaz, last attack of the war, like oh oh buddy, just a heartbreaker. Um, not to mention our man. Pinto, who had on Megan 98% in the dying seconds of the war. If that had been a three-star, that's win for Invicta. But is what it is, guys. Fantastic war. I can't, like, I'm still even just, like, reminiscing on the moment. I am, like, still just ecstatic, beaming ear to ear. Just the fact that, um, you know, what we have spawned here in Invicta is just a well-oiled machine and it really showed this war really really nice job overall Invicta um I didn't finish counting those bullies though so let's go back up real quick da, 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 da. so I was on me so there's another one uh Jake there's another one Duce there's another one Trigger Man there's another one Warren is it 9.5 so technically there's another one Trigger Man again like just unbelievable i know there's one at the bottom here too 9.5 going in and our number 29 like obviously 1.0 was on a bad day like i'd said but was still an just awesome effort overall by the clan nonetheless because we could have been just as just as bad at the nines and the, the war wouldn't have been even close right however our guys just stepped it up have a few six packs in there um just fantastic job cleaned it up very early we gave our top half the more than enough opportunity to uh to do what they had to do to get it done up there and unfortunately we just fell like inches 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 short and sucks but is what it is we had an awesome time and an awesome war nonetheless and i got probably a dozen attacks here i want to show you i don't even know where i'm going to start but let's just go right down to the bottom number 30 Desmond getting hit by Heartless. So I like the use of the one witch here. Now the use of the one witch, uh, one of Caddick's base building theories is do not give up your clan castle for one barb or two barbs at most. So two barbs, literally two troop space gets the P.E.K.K.A. pulled out here. That's all that matters. Witch is going to go down with another barb, kind of doing a little tank in there, just waiting for the CC troops to get on over. He's going to drop the poisons and let the witch do her thing. Drop a whiz to help out once everything's locked on those skellies. <clears throat> so everything's going nice and clean. Gobby's going down to that poison. Peck is about to step into it. And as soon as it locks onto some skellies, there it goes. Dropping a wizard behind. Bam, bam, bam. Going to take care of that Peck at like nothing. Just clockwork on that. Absolutely well-oiled machines here. Peck did get a little scary. Ooh, excuse me. Scary close to that. Uh, Kitty, get off of here. Uh, sorry, Pekka did get scary close to that witch, but no big deal. She did her job. Pekka's taken care of. Here comes a Valk train. In they go. Joe's Fell's going to go down. Now, this little L-shaped compartment is like perfect access. You're essentially letting your troop, uh, your enemy in from the 5 o'clock spot and letting this L-shape connect right to the queen compartment at 9 o'clock. So there goes that second jump, essentially letting him into a good probably 50 plus percent of that base. And has 19 hogs to deal with the rest of it. So uh, everything's just going to continue to work through this stuff. Everything's just locked onto that defensive king right now. Down it goes. Sends in a few hogs out. The queen's taken care of in on that queen chamber. Is going to start start his claw, uh, hog rotation clockwise here. Going to go up and around the 12 o'clock spot. He's got a heal spell now that he's going to drop down, I believe, kind of around this uh, 2 o'clock intersection. Any second now, heal's going to go down. Da -da -da. Or maybe use it on this side. Yeah, I use it on this side. Oh. But, <clears throat> as you can see, he's got enough hogs pincering in. Now, everything's going down. Expo's down. Tesla is about to go down. See you later, base. Swag poison. There we go. Ability on the king. Just a sexy raid, Heartless. Tree in the bag, my friend. All right, 
just so many here. Val and I, Val had a six pack, had a really solid war, really good planning. Like the planning going on for this war, guys, was just awesome. Like the entire 2.0 family, swarm included, 2.0 obviously included, really just rallied together to try and uh, try and get this done. It's just unfortunate we didn't didn't come away with the victory, but uh, I mean it is 1.0. So what are you gonna do? <laughs> Uh, so this queen, a uh, little bit of a queen charge, is going to continue to walk down to this section. Uh, I believe opens it up because um, he does have seven wall breakers. Once the CC gets out and taken care of, I believe opens it up and steps up into this compartment so he can get basically, you know, a horseshoe of stuff all around this compartment. Um, so poison's taking care of all that stuff. Just got to finish working through that cannon. And she's going to lock on. How did they have the ability, ability there, unfortunately? Um but whatever, right? Whatever you got to do to keep that queen going. Uh, does not have any rage for her, so pretty much has to just rely on her own abilities now to uh, just get in there and work through the rest of that. But look, there's the expo. Other than that, there is no threat to her whatsoever. So drops this golem in there, gets a funnel going with his king or with those wizards, and then drops his king. Valxian is uh, right on that breadcrumb of storage. I love when there's a storage right there and you can use it as that breadcrumb. Get everything in there. All those Valks are, look how fast these Teslas go down. Boom, ba boom, ba boom. One, two, three, four. Just instantly. Jump spell is going to connect the queen back up to the to the uh, kill squad here, which is absolutely perfect. I believe the healers are now going to reroute onto this goal and get it back up to full health. Start sending the hogs now from basically the uh, four o'clock through the three o'clock position got to take care of all those defenses everything's in the queen chamber now all those valves in the queen chamber working on those heroes enemy heroes down they go just going to finish off that queen chamber there's literally an arch tower a cannon expo and a mortar remaining just a beautiful job there as a cleanup gob still in the bag mm. beautiful sexy hit val tree in the bag Oh, sorry about that. Uh, okay, so moving up the chains here. What do I have? 27. Mikhail. So I want to show this one um, because this is a newer style of attack. This is this Golem Avalanche attack. And... The idea here is on these very, um, I mean, a lot of times there's a neutral zone in the middle, which, uh, which is a really big tip off on doing this style of attack. But the idea here is to bring very, you know, still has eight wall breakers, but bring as many, few wall breakers as you can, four jump spells and five golems and a whole crap ton of wizards in combination with your heroes. You're going to, the idea is like, he looks at this compartment. Okay. There's no defenses here. That air sweeper is very far away. So if you drop a jump spell here, definitely going to go with that mortar. If you drop another one on this corner and they're at this mortar, they're going to go over to these defenses and then continue their way up. So jump, jump, and jump. Let's all these golems into the entire base. Does lose his king very early. That was fairly unfortunate for this. That's kind of what made this raid a little bit scary by the end. But look at him just kind of slowly feeding these wizards. Feeds in that next golem, opens up the wall, is going to jump spell over this intersection, basically letting everything up in that next compartment, still has another golem, he's going to save for the back end here, and has two more jump spells, one's going to go here, one's going to go here, five wall breakers, six wizards still to go, and has basically 50% of this base almost down. <clears throat> so very very slow attack obviously but that's the idea here you just want to be patient let your golems work through the defenses and slowly reinforce wizards on all the buildings as the golems change targets and continue on here uh queen is ends up getting targeted here which is fairly unfortunate as well and has already used the ability so down she goes but doesn't matter he's got enough wizards few um one two full golems in there about to get burst but a bunch of golemites very scary moment coming up for the raid here because take a look at this soon as they get to this location there's a dgb right there oh raid look really scary at this point but these two wizards on the outside absolutely do freaking work get up to that cannon tree in the bag for mikhao nice job buddy mikhao just got promoted 2.0 as well nice job my friend mm. All right, 25 going in on crazy movements. Ryan, Ryan almost had a six pack, and he had this attack plus another 98%. So nice job, Ryan. 
Um, and then, of course, what would a wiser recap be without an open alleyway style of base uh, and how it gets abused? So this queen charge, right, is going to get insane value. Look, there's an expo there, two wizard towers, cannon, CC troops, both defensive heroes. So yeah, it's going to be difficult to keep her alive through all that. But a raid spell, the ability and poison is just overpowered when you're dealing with this. As long as everything goes out perfectly conserves the ability rate right for when the Pekka gets there boom hits the ability Pekka does not even get a swing off at that queen down it goes takes down the expo she's just gonna walk down this alley now like right down towards this town hall and imagine the queen standing in the middle here look like pretty much the whole base except for this tiny wizard tower compartment and this six o'clock compartment are accessible by a queen standing in the core so um once and, and once you get through all that, there's no serious threat. So two heal spells and a jump now. Wall opens up. In comes the Valks. In comes that uh, cold-blooded golem. Everything's going to just work into this base. Jump spell goes down, leading the Valks up. I believe there's a DGB or something right in there. He wanted to get them up there. But this little Tesla farm pops and kind of starts to give him a little bit of problems. Uh, has the heal spell down, but it's just kind of a little pushed a little too far back. If he had uh, saved that heal a little deeper, maybe even over that Archer Tower to keep it up so Hogs join him through that Archer Tower, it would have been a little better. But Valks and the King get over there with that Golem right in time. Queen is still in there doing work. Like I said, she has her options, right? Like she can go wherever the heck she wants. This base is just wide open now once you take care of these compartments. And there's really only a couple defenses to go. So going to kind of get this moving here. But definitely going to be a treat in the bag for Ryan. Nice job, my friend. Boom, boom, boom. Wizard Tower. Got to go down. And see you later. Treat in the bag. All right, let's go down to 20. Lime Killer just got added to our base building team. Um, we actually went through his base. When he posted me his base, and he, <laughs> Lime sent me a message online. He's like, slay my base, Wiser. And it was difficult. It was a tough breakdown. It was a really nice base. I was blown away by his queen chamber. It had a really sexy design. I was really impressed with it. And we did some tweaks and made it just a really nice base. I think it held up at least three attacks in this war. Um, so wall's going to open up, creates this huge, huge, huge funnel, basically from 9 to 12. CC's troops start coming down, uh, so poison going to go down, take care of that. Now, what I liked about this is Lime just had this genius idea. He's like, you know what? If I come in at this angle, I'm going to be in between both air defense, right? Just like a standard shattered Lalo would be. However, at the same time, the queen is right against this wall. So what's the queen going to do, everyone? Jump this wall into that compartment with the air defense. He gets both air defense, gets the queen, gets the CC. And guys, I've talked about it a bazillion times. If you can manage to do that with a kill squad, look at what's going to happen. Three lava hounds are going to come in. Just do tanking for these uh, this crazy Tesla farm. Now, these the both Lava Hounds are almost dead. He loses one instantly. That second one is near. There it goes. It finally pops, but it buys just enough time for the loons to get there. Has a max Lava Hound. He now sends in from the CC. Doing serious tanking and eats a mine to the face, so it's already low health. The balloon there uh, takes a mine as well, but these rages and haste are just perfectly in this little horseshoe, pushing these balloons right to these defenses. Everything is timed just perfectly. Has to get over now to the uh, basically the wizard towers and archer tower, the only thing that are going to threaten these balloons. There's all these pups on the back end doing the cleanup. It's no big deal. Has a haste. He is about to drop kind of in this section. Uh, I believe to push, yep, there it goes. Going to push these balloons, basically throw them onto the arch tower. It drops the two distract balloons on the back end. And this base is done for. It's very sexy attack line. Just beautiful execution. Mm. I missed that air mine on the back end there. I really hurt those pops, but it doesn't matter. Um, all right, so moving up. Number 15 I had marked down here. Good old McGravy going in like a boss. You know what? Gravy's like, the new Valks, eh, I don't need them. I'm just going to do it old-fashioned. Uh, shattered Goho with a Queen Walk. So, uh, Queen Charge, I should say. Because basically the idea here is that Giant's going to do a little bit of tanking for it. He's going to open up the walls. Wall gets opened. Oh, maybe has a slight wall breaker fear there. I didn't notice that until before. Um, but wall gets opened up by another, uh, that extra backup wall breaker in the bag. Queen's going to charge in here, take a big value out of this compartment. 
you know there's all these small compartments now on the back end but really got two teslas um just insanely good value out of this pulls the cc troops out down goes that golem. She's going to be working on that for a while. So decides to use this time to send this cold-blooded golem. Create his funnel now with the wizards. Poison goes down again over top of this defensive here. I've really seen this, especially when you're bringing a cold-blooded golem. You want to let it live a little bit longer. Then your big, big concern is that the defensive arch queen. Is it going to lock on your golem? And if it does, I suggest dropping that poison on her to slow her fire rate. It's really going to keep that golem alive long enough. Get your funnel down and get those Valkyries into that core. Heal spell goes down, kind of taking care of everything. Uh, jump is going to open up now this king compartment and this other kind of neutral compartment. But as everything gets a little bit closer now, it's going to lock onto the king in this core and just start working through this stuff. So Grady's got 17 hogs. He's going to use, I believe, a giant on the back end, do a little bit of tanking and send in these hogs. Has a heal still in the bag for them as well. He's got these wizards still alive helping out. So here come the hogs. Sends in a bunch of them. There goes that heal spell. Just going to continue to let them work through this. He knows there's a bomb here. I believe he knew these were all single GBs, I think um because he does hit a bomb there i think he hits another one right here yep there goes that bomb so he does lose a few hogs but keeps eight in the bag for this back end area uh doesn't lose all of them still has a couple of them working on that arch tower they do pit her out here in one second um but he's just got too many coming in for the back end for really a wizard tower to go Ooh, tree in the bag for grady welcome to 2.0 my friend well deserved. Diesel, you knew I weren't, wasn't going to get away without showing your base here. Now, the reason why I wanted to show Diesel's base, not only because I've known Diesel for a long time, he used to be in 2.0, I defected to the dark side. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Ended up going and trying out for 1.0, which is totally cool. No, I, you know, I love Diesel. Um, but we talk a lot on Twitter and stuff, so you had to expect we're going to show this hit. Now, the main reason I wanted to show this hit is because MBD, Mr. Big Dog here, does this attack with about 15 Valks and 16 Balloons. It's almost like a, a hybrid version of a Go Valo. Now, you go very – I think he brought two Golems here. Maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, he's got two Golems in there, um, a bunch of Valks, and then no Lava Hounds. So the idea is the same thing. You want to get the air defense, and he does have a little bit of uh, struggles up here because this heal spell is very off. Imagine this heal spell over these Valks here working on these Teslas. Would have been a, a much better value, but says screw it. There's only the two air defense there, and he's got the golems working in. The next defenses they are going to target is going to be the air defenses. So goes on it locks onto that queen gets stalled up now look at this he's already got whatever a handful of balloons in on all these teslas which helps king gets in there he starts losing balloons to the air defense down goes air defense the number three and down goes air defense number four still has a few balloons on the back end here gonna drop and instantly get that mortar instantly get that wizard tower without any threat has to finish off that cannon and the arch tower but definitely there's just trash to go mbd just smash this base I actually did one of his attacks for my cleanup. I had a six pack actually this war. I was really happy with it. Um, I had a couple struggles. I'm gonna do one. I'm gonna do MBD's first hit as a cleanup actually because it was just a, such a nice plan. He just got a little bit extra anxious, and I'll talk about this in the actual video. But um, and I just uh, took his. Uh, <laughs> his attack and did the slightest adjustment and it turns out to be the three star so gonna show that but mbd has been really good using these you know very large amount of valks um pushing them through to the air defense and basically you know a new school uh anti three star go valo i really like it so uh okay did want to show ldp going in on this guy mm. is this a town hall nine attack using 28 balloons yes it is <laughs> So we're going to see how this pans out. Two zaps and a quake going down on this air defense near the queen chamber. So that one is now taken care of. Now the biggest concerns here, right, he's only got three lav hounds, but 28 balloons. Now what LDP recognizes is um, namely this one at 9 o'clock. There's only two defenses, right? Two balloons, two balloons, and a hound is going to take care of that air defense. Uh, does have that grounded expo there, so that's no big deal. Has an air expo here. So let's go into the queen chamber. Let's deal with the queen. Uh, it's basically suicide heroes, right? No golems, nothing. Just drops the king, drops the... Um, does, uh, does he even drop his queen? Doesn't even drop his queen. 
So Suicide's the king in there gets insane value actually out of just a king. Now the balloons are in, hay spells are down, air defense number two is now taken care of. So gonna work into that court. These balloons do pitter out a little bit, take out a few defenses in the progress. Boom, boom. Here's the nine o'clock air defense. I was talking about one hound, few balloons. Probably didn't even need that many balloons. Cause look, he's got eight balloons on top of the one air defense. Probably could have got away with four, maybe five balloons on that nine o'clock section. Use the rest, kind of sprinkled in all around here. But last lab hound is in on that last air defense. Just picks this base apart one at a time. It has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and probably like. 13, 14 balloons in there, three more on the back end, has a cleanup minion, puffs all over the base. Queen is down at six o'clock doing cleanup. Just a beautiful job here, LDP. Cannon goes down. Definitely tree stars in the bag. Mmm. Wrecked it. Nice job, buddy. All right. One more. And we're going to conclude this very extended recap. ASAP. Aussie again the, you know these guys are, are are the guys I looked up to these are the guys you know Duce Jake obviously um, Crispy Crunch uh, all these guys at the top are long standing members of 1.0 that I used to watch in videos uh, kind of growing up within Clash Clans and uh, it's just a pleasure to, to war against these guys and see them in action and um, not only see them in action, but see some of our own guys take down their bases. So, um, really, these minions, all they did, look, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, funnels created, right? All I bring is Valks, <laughs> 19 Valks, five heals to spread across for those Valks, and send them in, and let's rage, and let's watch these Valks just absolutely melt this base. In comes a Golem, do the initial flanking with that giant, right? Really, the only three buildings he's got to worry about is those on the outside, so instantly the, the uh, Valks just wreck in there. 19 Valks, remember, all five healers go down to start healing up that stuff. As soon as that uh, Inferno goes down, the healer's going to get good value, start bringing those Valks right back up, bringing that Golem right back up to health. Poison goes down, but everything just moves so fast through that core, right? Right on top of that Inferno, boom, within seconds, both Inferno Towers are down. The Town Hall is not even dead, and both Inferno Towers are down. Has units all over the base. Queen takes a bit of a hike now, but no big deal, right? Her goal now is really just take care of... Uh of the trash buildings around the outside poison spell is just about to finish off that balloon so absolutely perfect still has two healers working on those valks and that king um, does lose basically all of his troops down at the six o'clock but if you look at what he's got here he's got two max heroes both with abilities sorry level 38 king but two very high level heroes both with their abilities still with the king having two healers on them a couple valkyries up so you look there's Arch tower cannon arch tower arch tower cannon cannon so three and three plus a wizard tower and a tesla you know what? For two max Valks with a couple healers and your heroes, that does not stand a chance. So really, it's coming down to time at this point. Um, but the fact that the Arch Queen's in there, just be able to get absolutely everything. Working on that cannon now. Valks ahead with those healers. We've got one healer on the Arch Queen, one healer on the uh, King and Valks. Just worked out absolutely perfect. Still has not burned the abilities. Does not even need to, probably. Um, think he just waits till the very end. Arch Tower is now dead. King's going to start working on that cannon. Finally hits the ability on that king, and definitely one compartment to go. This base does not stand a chance. A little premature on that Arch Queen ability. I would have hit it right when she walked into that, and boom, everything was dead. But it doesn't matter. Tree in the bag for Danny Boy. The pipes. The pipes. Oh. Sorry, I might have had a little bit to drink this afternoon. <laughs> I'm a little, little off today, but <laughs> it was a very beautiful day. It was one of those uh, first real summer days where I got to sit out on the patio and just relax today. So absolutely fantastic. Enjoying my day off. Wanted to do this recap and uh, had a lot of fun doing it. So hope you guys enjoyed 1.0. Hey. Hopefully, uh, we earn a little bit of respect with you guys because I know for a fact we had you sweating and uh, came down to your veterans like uh, <clears throat> Trigger Man too. Sorry for I had to mention. I've actually uh, worked with Trigger Man on plans. Trigger came over, I believe, for a war with us a long, long time ago, and I met him and got to work with him a little bit in one of our groups. And uh, obviously, Jake, Megan, you know, all these guys just 
just absolute pinnacles of uh, the fair play community and just a pleasure to match up against you guys and i'm really glad we gave you a run for your money because uh i guarantee you there were moments where you guys did not think you were going to win this war and uh <laughs> crispy crunch with that clutch attack at the end but we were expecting it right we uh, like i i mid war i sent out a tweet and we had such a good start but I knew 2.0 or 1.0 was bouncing off the ropes and it was coming and it came and they ended up prevailing. So congrats guys. It was an insane war right to the finish. Glad we could get that excitement. Cause I know it was the same for you guys and it's the same on your side. And, um, you know, I know your town hall nines really, really struggled and that sucks cause we've been there as well. However, uh, you know, when you got beast modes up at town hall 10 or town hall 10 and 11, I should say like do J Megan, right. Crispy, all these guys, uh, it's going to happen. So held true, you know, really nice to see uh, something we're going to take from this is really start designating our Town Hall 10s to be like Brady here and just jump up and immediately get these two stars. He did miss uh, Pinto, however, but uh, I see the theory behind it and we've been working on that. So we're designating a couple guys ourselves actually that are going to be the Town Hall 11 two-star specialists such as Brady. So again, One Hive, Jake, all you guys, just absolutely a fantastic job over there. Was uh, was a pleasure matching up. So I uh, hope I did this uh, recap diligence and uh, 1.0, 2.0, everyone, all the One Hive family. I love you guys. I'm just so humbled to be in this position where I can uh, actually recap things like this. So um, until next time, guys, that'll do it for your wisdom from Wiser. Just trying to help the bag that next tree star. Till then, I'm out.